Message chapter 2 and verse 24. I'm only going to read in the NLT. It says, This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Okay? The, the KJV says, And shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Okay? And the message says they become one flesh. You will embrace your wife. Okay, so I know that there has been many, there has been marriage has been abused. According to scripture, marriage is a union between Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve. <laughs> or, or not Adam and not Adam and Steve. Okay, it's between a man and a woman. Okay, that is the scriptural definition of marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a, a union, a family is because you can't talk about family and not mention the word marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's between a man and a woman with or without children. Mm -hmm. Very important. Just because you haven't got a child doesn't mean that there's no family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people, they don't have a child because they don't want to. But before I go into that, I've got a few quotes here about marriage, about family. And it says that, one of them says, family is not an important thing, it is everything. Mm -hmm. Family is not just important, it's not just an important, it's everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know, and the Lord want me to pray for us this evening when we are done. Because I know for some of us, we are in a dysfunctional home. And you are wondering, I'm not even happy here. Okay, I'm not happy here. You see, you didn't choose your family. you got to understand that. God chose your family for you. Okay, and, and there is a reason for that. Okay, another quote by Desmond Tutu says that, you didn't choose your family. They are God's gift to you as you are to them. So your family is not only a gift to you, you are a gift to them. We may have our differences, but nothing is more important than family. Sticking with your family is what makes it a family. I know there are challenges, there are issues, but we believe that even in the midst of that, God is able to do far above what you can think or imagine. God is a God of wonder. For with God, impossible is nothing. Maybe the reason why you are in that home is to transform that home. You know, I know people in dysfunctional homes where the breakthrough in that family is a result of their fasting and prayer. For their parents to think that it's their hard work alone. You know? But, you know, God will do what God will do. Okay? So I'm starting a series today on family. Okay? We are, for each and every one of us, we are, there is three families that we belong to. Four in particular, four actually. But one of them is two. Okay? So we, are, we have the earthly family. And the earthly family is, there's two, of, two earthly family. I am from a family, and I have my own family. Are you with me? So that's two. And the family you form is much more important than the family you are from. If you don't understand that, hey, you cannot enjoy marriage. So we also have the spiritual family. The church family. In fact, my second message, I'm going to be talking about the purpose of the church family. Because we need each other. You need me, I need you. And the third one, which I will not be sharing, is our heavenly family. Because earth is not our home. Scripture says we are passerby. We are strangers. Some fashion says we are aliens in this world. You are here on assignment. You are here the, the world to, some, to, to, to us Christians is like a market. When you, go, when you come to the market, no matter how long you spend there, you will, you will, so, you will go home. Okay? So, 
But in talking about family, in talking about marriage, one thing that is important is to know that God is the head of all the three kinds of family. God is the head. Whether the earthly family, the spiritual family, or the heavenly family. You know, someone said that for a family to work, it takes three people. The, fa the man, the woman, and the Holy Spirit. So when you take out the issue from the marriage, there will be struggles, there will be challenges. Because the thing is, human beings, we have what we call a threshold. You know, so you can be you can be a nice person, but not a godly person. Eventually, if I keep pushing you with crap because you are you are absorbing my 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 stress with your own energy, in, in your own strength, in your own power. And the power of man is limited. The most powerful man, men on earth, they, are, they, they have limited power. But God's power is unlimited. Okay? So God is the head of the home. Okay? God is the head of the church. And God is the head of heaven. To remove God from any of this, then our focus will be shifted from its original purpose. So we cannot, God should be the center of our home, of our marriage. And if our parents refuse that, you can instill that. And it's so important because oftentimes we, you see, if you're, if you're, whatever you don't know, you are in darkness about. The word, the word that translates darkness is the word that translates ignorance. So you can imagine you are trying to, you are trying to correct me on something I don't know. I'm in darkness about I'm ignorant. When our parents are ignorant about certain spiritual truth, no matter what you do or say, they don't get it. It's not in their reality. They don't know it. But I pray God will give us strength Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. There are two key scriptures that I want to I want to touch on this evening. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 15. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 15. He says, For this reason, grasping the greatness of his plan by which Jews and Gentiles were joined together in Christ, I bow my knees in reference before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derive its name from. So every family in heaven and on earth belongs to God. God is the head. First Corinthians chapter chapter eleven, verse thirteen to fourteen. Verse eleven, okay, verse eleven and twelve. Right? Verse eleven says, nevertheless, in the Lord, the woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as a woman comes from a man, so also a man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. Does that make sense? So, so it is important for us to know that God is interested in the marriage. You know, the, 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 word, the word today, marriage, marriage institution has the greatest attack in our world today. Because once a marriage, once a family is attacked, the marriage is attacked, then the home becomes dysfunctional. Then children begin to do what they like. But you should come home and things should be in order. I pray Holy Spirit to help us in Jesus' name. You see, before I proceed into my message tonight, I need to tell you a few things. Number one, you did not pick your family. Okay? It is God that chose the family that you are from. And we we need to listen as children. And as parents, we it is it is our role to teach. You, you didn't pick your family. <laughs> because if I'm to pick my family, <laughs> you think I will pick one village in Nigeria where there's no electricity. <laughs> that would be stupid of me. You can imagine. Hey, if I tell you what I want you to, to enter this country, you'll not believe. Maybe a 
story for one another day. So if, if you get a chance to pick your family, whether it's America, it's Australia, it's UK, I will not pick Nigeria. I will not pick one store, one village, where there is no light, where <laughs> demons are always fighting. Ah. Not only would I pick my family, I will just pick that. I only want one sibling. I don't want... <laughs> yeah. My father had 11 children. My mother had five boys. So you can imagine. I understand, I understand why in the UK, Caucasians have quality family life. Because you only have one child or two children. The sensible one, anyway. Not the ones who are collecting income support. Because the ones who are collecting time, they don't do anything. They're just having children like no man's business. Because you can imagine, the little you have, if you have to spread among six children, it's not even enough. But if it's only one, instead of going to, going to Primark, you go to Gap. You go to a better, a better store to buy things for them. Okay? Number two. Each, each and every member of the family has a responsibility and a role to play. Ladies and gentlemen, as dysfunctional as your home is, your family is, you have a role to play. I have a role to play. We have a role to play. And failure to play that role, you see, it is it, it has been said that it is insanity to keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Apostle Paul said when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I acted like a child. When I became an adult, I put away childish things. Yeah. You know, I have a 10 year old and it's trying to tell me I'm going to be a teenager too. Then we can talk. Like, I can go to school myself. She's so going to start second grade. Like, I can go to school myself. Wow. So, the time we come where I don't have a choice, we need to have a mature conversation. It will happen. No matter, it will happen. Okay? Number three, you are not in your family by mistake or by error. Get this. You are not in that family by mistake or by error. God, God needed you in that family. God intended you to be in that family. And never compare your family to other family. You are not there by mistake. You are not there by error. You are there on purpose and for a purpose. Family is so important that Jesus even needed to have one here on earth. To tell you, because Jesus, you know, Jesus could have dropped from heaven as a grown up. He has the power to just, to just, to just, to just, to just appear. But no, because he needs, a fa- he needs to be in a family system because he understood the family culture. There are two areas I want to cover this evening. First and foremost, I'll talk about the principle of godly marriage. And then we're going to look at God's instruction concerning marriage. Okay? Because it's important that some principles are biblical. And if we don't follow them, we cannot have a good home. You see, I many years ago, I met a, 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 a young girl. Maybe she was like seven or eight. I don't know what we're talking about. He told me, Uncle, I don't want to get married. I'm like, why? I don't like the way that I treat my mom. And I just shout to my mom, I don't like you. I'm not going to get married. Like, I don't, I don't like men. I don't like boys. For like two minutes, I was, I was just quiet. I'm like, wow. So I told her, Holy Spirit said to me, tell her that you can have a different marriage. And I try to say, no, you can pray that God, let, I want to marry the man that I will marry. Let him be a godly man. Let him not be like my daddy. The girl answered, no, mm, no, oh, uncle, that's true. And I, and I pray that. Would God answer? Yeah, God will answer. Because a picture of a, of, of a home is distorted. Mm-hmm. And there are principles that governs all. And if you don't abide by this principle, things will go wrong. Number one, our, our, our family must res- we, we resemble our Heavenly Father. Every home must be a prototype of God. You know, a man of God was saying that one of the, one of the biggest threats in marriage, in family, is when is is when us when husband and wife grow separately 
when they grow apart. And it says that one of the ways to grow together is to always agree together in prayer. Whether it be for two minutes, for ten minutes, for five minutes, agree together in prayer. And I thought that's powerful. Because a family that pray together stay together. Colossians 3, verse 12 to 16. Since God chose you to be the only people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tenderness, tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's fault and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord gave you. Remember the Lord forgave you it must also forgive. Now, this scripture is, is giving us what we need to do in marriage. Because, you see, for those of us who are married, you know, marriage is hard work. It's a lot. And so, sometimes, you just, you just want to just throw it out, you know. I'm not enough. That's it. I'm done. But scripture says, with tender hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, Make allowance for each other's fault and forgive anyone who offends you. Your spouse will offend you the most. And the person you will forgive the most is your spouse. Your children will forget who, 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 who upset you the most. So you must willing to forgive them. You see, a family that resembles the family in heaven is a family that are ready to walk in love, in kindness, in humility, in gentleness, to love each other. Verse 14 says, above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. For as the members of one body, you are called to live in peace. Always be thankful. So I want to encourage you, our home, the first principle is it must resemble our Heavenly Father. What are the traits you pick up from scriptures? Begin to imbibe that culture in your home. Begin to pray. You see, you might begin to, for those of us who are single, begin to pray certain things you want to see. Begin to pray for your parents. Begin to pray for them. Trust me, if you pray that prayer long enough, you will see changes. I'm telling you, oftentimes, you know, African parents, they don't like to apologize. Mm -hmm. They will use time. That's right. They will use time to just, um, they will not say I'm sorry. So if you are, if you are, if you are waiting, daddy must tell me I'm sorry. You will wait till eternity. You will wait till that. <laughs> they will never come. They will say I'm eating. I'm telling you. It will never, it, it will not come. So don't, but, but understand the way they will come and apologize to you. Mm -hmm. When your parents come into your room to check up on you, you know they are trying to, they are trying to say, you know, I'm sorry now. But they won't say I'm sorry. Because they know that, because they know that your, this is your mouth here. Yeah? The way they say I'm sorry, hey, you will say in the head, and then finally, they say I'm sorry. You see, it's your fault. You will not begin, they will not begin to blame themselves. Why did I say I'm sorry? <laughs> Even my, my four year, if I say I'm sorry, she will just go and on, oh daddy, you are that. Four years old. Four years. All my days. Because of time. Number two. We, the second principle is commitment to the hard work of relationship. We must be committed to the hard work. Relationship is hard work. We must be. The way Christ is committed to us, we must be. Each member of the family must be. There must be commitment. One of the one of apart from one of the things that makes a marriage work is two people who are committed to make things work. They must be committed. There must be commitment. You see, no matter how so rich a family is or how so poor they are, if there is no commitment, they will not enjoy it. You see, we are never meant to be Christian all by ourselves. Being Christian assumes that we are in the community. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 2. Never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would to your own father. 
Talk to you. Talk to younger men as with your own brother. Treat older women as with your own mother. And treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sister. So you must be committed. Many people are not committed in a family. So that's why there is dysfunctionality. And anywhere there is lack of commitment and you begin to see these things, you know, you know, one of the one of the one of the mistakes that we do as young people is begin to confront our parents. Don't confront them. A seasons, their season of vulnerability will come. But until then, keep them in prayers. Does that mean sense? Keep them in prayers. I'm telling you, it's a, I said, you see, you know, you, you know, you know what, what I was saying, long suffering. You know what it means to suffer long? You are suffering for a long time for the sake of the gospel. Your parents will shout, they will scream, be patient, endure, meekness. I pray God we are in the name of Jesus. Amen. Relationships are difficult, but that is what makes them interesting. Many people cannot let go of their grievances. They keep a list of them in their head. So they, they cannot be committed because they have a list of grievances. Relationships are hard work, but people are often not willing to do the hard work. And whatever you're not willing to do, you cannot enjoy the fruit of it. It's a lot. It's a lot. You know, <laughs> Some of you, you are waiting for your parents to apologize. They have never apologized to your own spouse. Mm-hmm. She never apologized to you. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time your, your, your parents told you that I love you? You, you? The last time you heard that thing was, you don't even remember it. And they will not, they will not say it to you. They, don't have, they are saying it in their head. But you have, you, have, you have to understand when they are, when sometimes they will try other means. Just accept it for now. You know, being a parent is a lot. Mm-hmm. And you, you will not understand the sacrifice of parenting until you become one yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Absolutely. When my wife gave birth to my first daughter, the amount of sleepless night I had, I think after like six months or so, I called my mom and said, God bless you, woman. You gave birth to five boys. How did you manage? How? Because me, one day I was very tired. Like some day I just feel like, let me just go and sleep in the guest room. I just need to sleep. I've got work. My wife will be battling. I say, like, wow. <laughs> Number three. The third principle is we must reflect the the family, the God's family belief system. Every family must reflect God. We must reflect the system of the kingdom. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Direct your children to the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. 1 Timothy 4, verse 3, verse 4. He must manage his own family well, having children who respect and obey him. Okay? We, we, we need to understand that God as a blueprint for family. God as a system for family. And so we need to be able to relate with him. We need to be able to speak to him and trust him. There are challenges. But God, you see, whatever we submit to God never fails. Are you with me? Whatever you give to God never fails. You may not see the result immediately. But time is a test. Because every prayer you are praying now, it is not a waste. Are you with me? Every prayer you are praying now is a seed. And every seed, under the right condition, will bring forth life. It's a matter of time. And often, before a, a seed will shoot up, they will grow roots, they will grow deeper. And very quickly, as I begin to round up, I want to look at God's instruction for marriage. The four things that God instructs us to do within the family system. And if we don't do these four things, you can never have a godly family. 
And so this is a lesson for you and I to learn. You see, one of these, I saw a lot of this functionality when I was growing up. When I was growing up. All right, I saw physical abuse with my late dad and my mom. And I made up my mind that whenever I get married, I will not abuse my wife. I just made up my mind. So this is not right. I just thought, I don't know. It's not cool. I don't even like fight in the first place. Well, let me not lie. I used to fight lots in secondary school. Oh, we used to fight. Any small thing, they'll draw a circle. They yeah, come and fight. My father and my mother, let's fight. There are days where I will come back home with blisters like this. One, of, one time I fought three people in one day. One of my two. <laughs> because if you don't fight, they will begin to bully you. You just have some. When I was in secondary school, I went to boys' school, you were bullies. But eventually, I grew out of it. When I was a singer, I just thought all this fighting and fighting, I don't think it's good. I just don't want to because if I fight and I get back home, but I didn't beat me again for fighting. So like, <laughs> <laughs> because there's no way I can, you know, you cannot lie. And there are, there are, there are some of old aunties, by the time my daddy go to school for parents evening, they're not going to download. Ah, yeah. I was fighting, fighting, fighting. Hey, so. I stopped not because God said, <laughs> because my father will beat me the more. All right, so number one, very quickly. The first thing is instructions for husbands, for fathers. And we are looking at Ephesians 3, Ephesians 5 and verse 33. All right, Ephesians 5 verse 33, it says, However, each man among you, without exception, is to love his wife. As his very own, with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. The first instruction in the family is God says, Husband, love your wife. A woman you don't love, don't marry. I'm talking to the guys that if you don't, anybody you don't love, don't marry them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't marry because my parents said, you know, we should just marry. Or my pastor said, you must love them. And love, love grows. If you give love a chance, love will grow. So please, it is important. The word love means, means tenderness, intimacy, warmth, friendship. Marry a friend. Because a marriage today, at least in our parents' marriage anyway, friendship is missing. It's like one is one is the Lord, the Alpha and Omega. And mommy is just there. One minute she's, she's up, the next minute she's there. She, she's just tossed around everywhere. Love means a great interest and pleasure in something. Very quickly, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to verse 4 talks about what love is. That is the biblical definition of love that a man, you see, when scripture says, man, love your wife, and wife, respect your husband. People think that to respect is much more than, more than to love. I will show you what love is. It says, if I speak in tongues of men or, or of angels, but I don't love, go to verse four, from verse four, from verse four. This is what love is. All right? This is what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Verse 5. It does, it, it does not dishonor others. It, does not, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It gives no record of wrong. And if you go on and on and on and on, it does not delight in evil. So the word love is a summary of the Ten Commandments. Love your neighbor. Love God. Love your neighbor and love yourself. So when scripture says, husband, love your wife, he's saying, do all these things. Do all these things. All right, so the first instruction is, we, it is important that you love tender, tenderness, intimacy, warmth, friendship. 
a great interest and pleasure in something. Number two is the instruction for wives. In that same scripture, the, the second part of the scripture, Ephesians 5, verse 33b, and wife that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him, prefers him and treats him with loving concerns, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dearly. Ladies and gentlemen, that scripture says, why you should respect your husband, it doesn't mean that you are a slave to your husband. No. It is just, it is just a wrong mentality to have. To respect is to have due regards for someone's feelings, their wishes and their rights. And hear this, there is no condition attached to each of these instructions. Bible did not say, Pillar, love your wife as long as she respects me. Or it didn't say, wife, respect your husband as long as he loves you. They are independent of each other. To respect is to have due regard, high esteem, politeness, courtesy, respect. You see, ladies, if you don't respect men, don't marry. Mm -hmm. All right, if you don't respect men in general, if you have no regard for men, if you don't respect men, don't marry. If you only respect a particular type of men, then marry that type. Are you with me? Because <laughs> respect to a man is so important. Regard to a man is so important. So this is second instruction. And if we're able to follow this independently, trust me, there was a story of a woman of God, a lady who was married, who became born again. And she loved God so much that she would go to church, her husband would be bitter. There are days where she would go to an all night meeting. She would get back home at 2 a.m. in the morning. The Lord would have locked the, the door of the house. She, came, she said this herself. And you know what she would do? She would sleep outside. When the husband opened the door in the morning, she would say good morning to the husband and go and make him breakfast. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And that continued for years. The man tried to provoke the woman, but the woman didn't allow it. And guess what? When the man became born again, oh my days, it was a different ball game. You see, when you are in a marriage, when you are in a family, you are not there by choice. You are there by God. It is not your choice. God put you there. And so do your best while you are there. They are, if I should ask us now, what don't you like in your family? <laughs> Five pages you are still writing. <laughs> Seven pages you are still writing. But you know the irony? If you ask my children, what do you like about me? They probably write four, five pages too. The point is nobody is perfect. But if we follow these instructions, it will help us. The third instruction is for children, for you and I. Ephesians 6, verse 1 to verse 3. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is, this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and your mother, things will go well for you and you have long life on earth. Wow. So, whether your parents love each other or not, whether they love you or not, honor them, respect them. That is scriptural. Are you with me? It is hard. And that is where we need the Holy Spirit to help us to be able to achieve because you cannot see your blind spot. There are certain mistakes, there are certain things you have noticed about your parents that you know it is wrong, but they can't see it because it's their blind spot. You know, if I don't ask you to scratch my back, that's a place that my hand can't get to. I cannot see my blind spot. Okay, so the third instruction is for you and is for children. Obey your parents. 
Submit to, to obey is to submit to the authority of someone or to comply with a law. To obey is to carry out a command or, inst or an instruction. To obey is to behave in accordance with. To obey is to carry out, to act on, to fulfill, to perform. Look at your neighbor and say, obey your, obey your parents. Obey your parents. It's not going to be easy. Okay, you know one of the prayers I'm praying to God, when my children get ready when they go to uni, please, let them come. That I will do everything to say, when is holiday, they can't wait to go. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, when I was in uni, I didn't want to go. When it's holiday, I want to keep my day. I have to find something to do. I'm like, no, I, can't. I, I just can't handle this. And I'm praying, God, I don't want, I don't want my home to come home. I want my girls to say, oh, I can't wait to go home, man. I can't wait to go. I can't wait to go home. And so we can actually build a better family compared to our parents. And we can learn a thing or two from them. And the, top, the fourth one, as we round up because of time, is instructions for parents. Ephesians 6 and verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Okay? Do not, you know, experience them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial or unreasonable. Okay? But it says, but bring them up in discipline and instruction of the law. Parent, as a parent, we have a responsibility to teach our children to discipline them in the ways of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't teach your children, social media will teach them. Mm -hmm. If you don't teach your children, the school will teach them. Mm -hmm. So we have a responsibility. You see, when you become a parent, don't, don't, don't put work and money ahead of your home. There is a time and a season. And that is why it's good to get married early and have your children early. By the time, by the time they are by the time they are 16, you are still in your 15. You can begin to not be doing more shift and be making money. Because they are grown up, they can look after themselves. Of course, no only God will decide when you to have a child. Okay, somebody have some people have late and heavy and whatnot. But at least do your best. Teach them. We have a responsibility. So, so there are four things. There are four principles. There are four things that God wants us to do in marriage. First and foremost, for we as men to love us, our wives. And secondly, for the wife to respect their husbands. And thirdly, for children to obey their parents. And fourthly, for parents to teach their children. You know, I believe in discipline. Sometimes when I'm dealing with my wife, I say, it's too much. No, 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 I have to discipline. Because, you know, there are times where my girls will be, will be naughty. And my wife will say, I will call daddy. They will sit up. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my friends, I'm not going to mention, one of my friends, the children came over to our house. I took them to the cinema with my girls and whatnot. And one of the, one of the, the younger one was not the older one. And I, I checked in with everything. You won't come to my house again. I will you leave the car. She, the moment I say, I will report it to your father. She tapped me. I will stop. I will stop. I will stop. I said, correct. <laughs> you have to fail. You have to fail your father. You understand? You have to fail. My wife will say, if I call daddy. It's not you must. You must. Does that make sense? But whatever we do, we do it in love. Whatever we do, we have to correct, we have to treat, we have to do it in love. Oftentimes, when I discipline princess, I'll call her back, I'll my own after, I'll tell her why I do what I did, and I say, I'm doing this in love for you. Mm -hmm. If I should tell daddy, if I, if you need to smack, I say, no, I don't want to smack you again. Say, smack me, no, 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 no. I'll do it that. You can imagine, discipline is go to bed, that discipline. In my own time, hey, you will, you will do frog job and now you will oh. <laughs> But I want us to pray. Let's rise up on our feet. I want us to pray. Because of I want us to just pray. Masi, kate, preto, jetete, le, prasik. See, family is God's idea for, for us. Are you with me? 
Family is God's idea. And you know, the dysfunctionality we are seeing in our homes today, sometimes it's not really our parents' fault. It's life. It's life. Men, you don't know what men go through. You don't know the challenges we face. You don't know the pressure we go through. You don't know. You don't know. Mothers, women, they go through a lot. I want to just pray. I want to just pray for families. There are families today that are under attack. They are under siege. Things are happening that you, you, you just could not imagine. Godly homes. I want to just pray that God, the Spirit of God will reign in every home in the name of Jesus. Masi kate preto shetete le prasu kate preto shetete predodo masi kete preto shetete. Just say, say God, just pray, just, just, just speak to God tonight. I want to, first and foremost, we want to pray collectively for every dysfunctional home, every home that is. They say, God, let peace reign. Let your hand. Taught every home that is dysfunctional. Let peace reign now. In the, I know there are some homes that they are, they are beyond repairs, but there is nothing God cannot do. Mm -hmm. Also pray every dysfunctional home, God will touch the heart of each parent. That God will touch their heart in the name of Jesus. Because if they are not willing to reconcile, then nothing can happen. First, they have to be a willing heart. Masi kate bre to shete te bre dodo. Le prasu kate bre to shete te bre dodo. Le pasi kate bre dodo. Masi kete bre to shete te bre dodo. Le prasu kete bre to shete te bre dodo. Sate le kete bre dodo. Masi kete bre to shete te bre dodo. Le prasi kate bre to shete te bre dodo. Masi kete bre to shete te bre dodo. Le sati la bre to shete te bre dodo. Masi kete bre to shete te bre dodo. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You know, when I was preparing this message, the Lord laid a prayer point in my heart. And I want us to pray. I want us to pray. The Lord wants me to pray for strength for some of us here tonight. Do we have anointing or here? Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray if you are here tonight and there is dysfunctionality in that home and you like me to pray with you because you are the one you are the right person that God will use to transform your home you probably just need to change your prayer point or improve on the prayer points you are. Because God will hear you. God is a wonder-working God. The, the problem is, you don't know when. I don't know when that change will occur. But it will occur. It's a matter of time. So if you're here tonight, maybe there are, there are things happening at home that you're not happy with. You know that they are ungodly, not from your feelings, but looking at the scriptures. You know these things are wrong, scripturally. It's not your feeling. It's not because, well, because I don't like my dad, I don't like my mom, and that's why. And you like me to join my with you in prayer. Please come. Masi kate bre to shetete. Le prasu kate bre do. Masi kete bre to shetete bre do do. Le prasi kete bre ko to shetete bre do do. Masi kete. Just, just believe God. Just believe God. I'm only a messenger. I'm just here. Masi kate bre to shetete bre ko to. I want you to know that no matter what is happening, you are not living at home. No matter what is happening, you are not going anywhere. Stay put. Stay put. Stay put. It's a battle that you have to fight. And this battle. You, God will strengthen you. God will empower you. God, I don't know who I'm talking to you. The Lord said, don't leave. The Lord said, don't leave. I don't know who I'm talking. The Lord said, don't leave. The, to, tonight, the Lord will, will add to your strength. The Lord will increase your strength. The reason, you are the, the reason, that is, the Lord said that 
one of the reasons why you are in that family is to break certain chains, is to break certain traditional causes, is to break this. Masi kate break to shetete, le prasu kate break to shetete, break to masi kate break to shetete, break to toska, le prasu kate break to shetete. Lord, I release grace upon your daughter in the name of Jesus. Le prasu kate break to shka, le sate le gede boshka. Lord, strength, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, strength. You will win this battle. You will win this war in the name of Jesus. Whatever is happening. 